Hello, my name is uh, Felix Bussier. I'm from IDQ. And today I'd like to spend a bit of time with you to tell you about what we do and more about some of our products. Essentially, what we've been doing at IDQ since more than 20 years is trying to enable quantum technologies through what we do, which is focused on photon detection solutions. And we do this by having a line of products. On one end, we have the time tagging devices, the ID1000. We also have SPAD single photon detectors called the iCube line. And we also have superconducting nanowire single photon detectors, the ID281 line of products. We're active in many, many fields. And what I want to focus on today is mostly these fields here. And more precisely, I want to talk about two approaches that we have at IDQ for photon number resolving SNSPDs. Okay, so the activity in terms of SNSPDs at IDQ started around 2014, where we made the first wafers. We had the first working detectors. Around 2017, we started setting our first system based on absorption working at 0 0.8 Kelvin. Uh, in 2021, we started shipping photon number resolving and ultra-fast SNSPDs. Today in 2023, we have continuous operation system, we have leading specs, short deliveries around the world. And just like you, we're trying to make an impact on quantum technologies, especially in the fields of photonic quantum computing and ultra-high Q8 quantum key distribution. We have a family of detectors and cryogenic systems. So let's start with detectors. As you probably know, superconducting nanowire single photon detectors offer top of the line performance in all the specifications, especially efficiency, where we can reach efficiencies more than 95%. We also have detectors that have excellent combination of recovery time and jitter, so less than 30 nanoseconds and 30 picoseconds. We have detectors that are faster than this and also that can have jitters Lower than this, 20 picosecond or less, we do that. Uh, recently, we started shipping some systems that have an excellent combination of high efficiency, more than 80%, with very low noise, less than one count per second at 1550 nanometers. And our detectors can also cover a very large range of wavelengths. They can work at around 600 nanometers, and they can also work around two microns and above. In terms of cryogenic systems, we have the SO system for sorption equipped system that is made to house the full detector catalog. We also have the continuous operation system or CO system, which works without any interruptions and also works with the maturity of our detectors. Everything can be integrated in a compact solution, in a rack for mobility, and so on. So please contact us if you are interested in any of these. Now, what I want to focus on today is photonomer resolving SNS. But of course, the question of why is fundamental. So the space in quantum optics, being able to operate in a space that's larger than the zero or one photon, but maybe in two, three, uh, et cetera, more photons, is a space that can enable applications or quantum protocols and sometimes just uh, enhance them or uh, you know, make them work. Without that, you might not be able to do something. There's a very good example of this concerned with uh, quantum computing. Uh, this is a paper that just came out, which shows that by using photon number resolving detectors, you can uh, deepen or enhance the quantum advantage that an optical quantum computer can have. I'm not going to go into the details here, but what I want to say is that the kind of detectors that we do offer very high efficiency and are much faster. So if they would have been used in that experiment, would have uh, even benefited the speed and the uh, actual, the, the depth of the demonstration because the efficiency of our detectors is better. This is, I think, a very striking example of the benefit that you can get with photon number resolving SNSPDs. Okay, so the two approaches that I'm going to cover are the following. The first one, parallel SNSPDs or PSNSPDs as we call them, is comprised of several pixels that are connected together in parallel, but everything is read out with one line. Okay, so the signals of the different pixels are going to add up to different pixels, are going to add up on top of each other, and you're going to get a certain amplitude that's going to depend on how many detectors have actually clicked. Now, because there's one line per detector, you can put as many detectors as you have spots in a crosstab, so a 16-channel crosstab can house 16 of such devices. You can do PNR with that and ultra-fast detections in the rates of you know, 100 megacounts per second or above. 
The second approach is the multi-pixel SNSPD. We call it MPSNSPD. And in such a device, you have independent detectors, independent pixels operated in, uh, and read out independently with as many readout lines as you have pixels. With that, you can do what we call dynamic PNR, that is photon number resolution where the length of the pulse is not important, the length uh, in space or the duration in time. And you can even do faster ultra-fast detection rates uh, reaching more than one giga count per second. Both types have interleaved design so that the uniformity of the detection efficiency of the pixels is the same, and they can be read out with time tagging based uh, devices. Just like our normal detectors that can be offered with high efficiency and low dark count rate, and none of our devices actually latch. Not only they don't latch at all, but for such devices, there's also no electrical crosstalk, and the way we do this is patented for our PS experience. Okay, so as I was mentioning, when you have the PS and SPD, all the pixels are connected in parallel. So the output amplitude is going to depend on the number of pixels that actually click. So if you look at the different amplitudes, you may observe you're going to see one to eight different levels here. One of the nice things you can do with that is a really fast detection or really fast recovery. If you have eight pixels and one of them click, you still have the other several seven pixels available for detecting the next incoming photon. And so one way to see how this works is by looking at a measurement of the efficiency as a function of the time after a detection. So if a detection occurred at zero time, then the efficiency is going to recover with something like this. We put a dead time there, but after 10 nanoseconds, what you see is an efficiency that's actually greater than 80% of the maximum efficiency of the device. Only after 10 nanoseconds. Basically, when one pixel clicks, the efficiency remains at the same value, minus one eight of the total efficiency, which is quite nice. So this short recovery time like this is not possible to get with a normal meander SNSPD, at least with a very good efficiency. Okay, so this is quite unique and is made possible thanks to this architecture of the PS in this case. Okay, in terms of photon number resolution, you want to do the following. You might have a certain photon number distribution at the input of your device. Uh, let's say you might have M photons or a distribution, so a column vector here rep representing that. And what you're going to get at the output is distribution of the number of clicks that you're going to get. And the relation between the photon state and the, the click is done by what the device actually does. So it turns out that this is a matrix and you can find the elements and this is going to tell you how the device is going to react if you send N photons at the input or M photons at the input. We've worked out a way to figure out precisely what this is for our devices. We characterize them. And once you have that, then you can send an unknown photon number distribution on a device, repeat the experiment, and then uh, reconstruct the photon number statistics. That's what we see right here for a Poisson statistics. We make a prediction on the different probabilities of getting N photons, and we verify that it fits very well with actually what was sent with Poisson statistics. We do this for different mu numbers here, 0 0.4, 8, and 1. Now you can try to play also a game that's more demanding, that is trying to determine with a minimum error probability, how many photons were incident on the detector at a given trial. Okay, so single shot probability, essentially. So here I'm going to take the, take the numbers of a device that has a single photon efficiency of 93%. And with this geometry, an eight pixel interleaved PS and SPD, the probability that two photons incident end up giving you a two click, so two ended click, is 76%. So it's quite high. For three photons, it's 52%. Four photons, it's 31%. So it, it, has, it is actually going down. But nevertheless, with the small numbers, it's quite high. And it's quite unique, actually, that we can get that. And these numbers are very good. Now, these numbers are not taken out of nowhere. We're shipping systems, and we just shipped a system, for instance, where we had some detectors that had this single photon efficiency of 93%, which means that they also had these probabilities. So the kind of application where this is useful is, for instance, photonic quantum computing. In such a scheme, one of the things that you might want to do is to herald better single photons uh, with that. So there's a way to do that using SPDC. So if you know about it, the idea is that you're going to pump a nonlinear crystal, create one or several photon pairs, 
with a certain probability distribution. And if you pump it in a regime where most of the time you have zero pair or one pair and infrequently more than one pair, you can measure here if you see a photon, and if you see a photon, then there should be one and only one. Of course, in practice, you can sometimes create more than one pair. And if this photon is not capable of resolving the number of photons there, you are going to, once in a while, herald more than one photon. So the way to look at this is by doing a G2 measurement with two detectors. So if you put a PS in SPD there, and it has a good efficiency, and the loss there is also very, very small, then you can rob there only when you see a one-click amplitude, and you can ignore when you see more than one click. Okay, so you're going to hear all on this and not at all on that. And by doing that, you should see a reduction or an increase of the quality of the single photon nature, which can be measured by the G2, which is the zero times second order of the population function. And so that's what we see right there. The G2 was measured as a function of the pump power, so increasing the probability of multiple parameters. And if we ignore these high levels here, we get this blue curve here. It's like having a threshold detector that has no photon number resolution. But then if we start heralding only when we see that and not when we see that, we get this reduction of the G2, so we get this red curve. The reduction is about 30%, so that's quite already a big improvement. We're working on making this even better. The other thing that we did as well is we use a detector in its ability to reconstruct photon number statistics to look at the statistics of a Hanerol the photon state here. And because this is SPDC, it should be thermal, and we should find a value G2 equal to 2, which is what we actually found. So the details of this are found in this paper. OK, let me move on to the MPS and SPDs. OK, so what the independent operation of all the pixels brings is a huge improvement in the detection rate okay? because the signals are not going to overlap onto one coax. They're going to be independently read out. So you get rid of some of the, the mixing of the signals together that can actually reduce your ability to detect multiple events. So what we did is, is the following. Here I'm showing results obtained with a 14 pixel MPS and SPD that has 90% efficiency in the low detection rates. And as you increase the detection rate and you look at all the outputs and you sum everything all together, you see something that stays flat. And then at some point with very high detection rates starts to go lower because the recovery time of each pixel starts to matter. Nevertheless, at 400 mega counts per second, the efficiency is still at 80%. And at 1.5 giga counts per second, the efficiency is around 45%. So this is quite large. You can enable new things like this. I'm going to show this in the next slide. But I want to mention one thing. Everything is operating here without any latching. It's very important because otherwise, if you have latching, you're not going to be able to reach such kind of rates with the high efficiency that these detectors can actually provide. And so the details about this are shown in this paper. So what I'm showing here is that there's actually a, a bit of a hierarchy in terms of the detection rates that you can get with the different kinds of SMSPDs. A single meander SNSPD is going to detect in the range of tens of mega counts per second, a PSNSPD in the hundreds, and an MPSNSPD is going to be able to detect in the one to two giga counts per second. This is how things scale in terms of detection rates. What can you enable with that? So one thing you can do is increasing the rate of quantum key distribution by a huge amount, essentially, thanks to the fact that these detectors can count extremely fast. So there's a paper that appeared on in Nature Photonics recently where such an experiment is described. I'm not going to describe everything in here, but essentially you have Alice, you have Bob, and if you give Bob the ability to detect at these very high rates, therefore Alice can also increase the rate at which the photons are sent, and you can implement a BB84 protocol with decoy states in there, and by using an MPS and SPD here and a PS and SPD here, you can match things so that you can count at high detection rates. And in that specific experiment, over a 10 kilometer fiber length, uh, a secret key rate of 64 megabits per second was obtained. And over a fiber length of 100 kilometers, three megabits per second was obtained. So quite a large, huge increase in terms of the detection rate, thanks to these fast detectors. 
Okay, so that's the end of this short presentation. I thank you very much for spending the time with us. And I'm doing this on behalf of everyone at IDQ. Uh, please get in touch with us. I hope I can see you at scientific events or conferences uh, in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you.